This video is part of a series where we build an entire FPV drone from start to finish. So if it feels like you're in the middle of a conversation that you missed the start of, that's why. If you're here for the information in this specific video, keep watching. But if you want to find out the full context for what's going on here, there's a link in the video description to the full playlist, and you might need to go back and start with video number one. Before we get into the meat of this video, I want to ask you to pause the video and go to another video I made and do something. And what I want you to do is calibrate your gimbals. Calibration tells the radio like where the end points of the gimbals are. If it's miscalibrated, like when you move the stick over to the right, it may not go all the way to the right or it may go too far to the right. Um, most of the time, this radio is going to come from the, from the factory with correctly calibrated gimbals, but just in case I want you to do it manually one time, it's always a good idea to do that if you've got a brand new controller. If you know that your controller's gimbals are calibrated correctly because you've been using it previously, then you can skip that step. Otherwise, there is a link in the video description to my video about how to calibrate your gimbals correctly. If you think you know how to calibrate gimbals, do me a favor and go watch the video anyway because there's a common mistake people make when they calibrate their gimbals that I talk about in that video that I want to make sure that you didn't make that mistake. After your gimbals are calibrated, come back here and keep watching. Now that we've got the controller bound to the receiver and the receiver actually talking to the flight controller, the next thing to do is to check our channel mapping. And what that means is here in the Betaflight receiver tab, we are going to move our controls one by one and we're going to make sure that the correct channel moves for each of the controls that we move. So the four main controls of an aircraft, multi-rotor, fixed wing, whatever, are the throttle, the yaw axis, which makes sort of think of that as like looking left and right, the roll axis, which is like tilting to the side, and the pitch axis, which is like looking up and down. And each of those controls is mapped to one of the four axes on our main control sticks. The standard layout that most people in the world are going to use is referred to as mode two. And mode two means that the controls are mapped as follows. The throttle is up and down on the left stick. The yaw axis is left and right on the left stick. The pitch axis is up and down on the right stick and the roll axis is left and right on the right stick. I strongly encourage everyone getting into RC hobby to learn in mode two, unless you know for a fact that the majority of people who you fly with fly in another mode. And the only real exception is gonna be that there are a few places in the world where the majority of people still fly in mode one. If everybody at your local flying club flies in mode one, then go ahead and learn in mode one because that's just what, it's very convenient to fly with the same controls as the people you fly with. Because if they're like, hey, let me see your quad. It sounds like maybe your PID tune could be better. Or do you wanna try my new quad that I just got? Here, take my controller and give it a whirl. It's very convenient if you can handle their controls. But most people the world over should fly in mode two. I will say that there are, and I sound like an old person. I feel like an old person when I say this. There are kids getting into this hobby who learned controls on the freaking Xboxes and the freaking Playstations. And so they're used to FPS video games and they map the, I don't even have to think about how the controls map. They would rather have their controls for their aircraft be more like they're playing an FPS game. I think it's mode three or mode four that they like to fly. I strongly encourage you to try to learn mode two. And if after 15 hours of practice in the simulator, you just cannot make mode two click, then I guess you have my permission to try to reshuffle the controls, but you are making your life harder going forward because you won't be able to fly the, mass, the vast majority of other crafts, mass majority of other crafts that are configured for mode two. We're gonna be going with mode two going forward. So I'm gonna move the throttle channel and sure enough, the throttle channel moves up and down. I'm gonna move the yaw channel and sure enough, the yaw channel moves left and right. I'm gonna move the pitch channel and sure enough, the pitch channel moves up and down. I'm gonna move the roll channel and sure enough, the roll channel moves left and right. By luck or skill, my channel mapping is correct from the beginning. If my channel mapping was not correct, for example, now my channel mapping is not correct, then I would see that when I move 
the throttle channel, the pitch channel moves. Okay, so how do we fix that? Uh, if your mapping is not correct, go down to the channel map and there are two preset channel maps, three actually, the default, free, it looks like the free sky and the default are the same, and then spectrum Grobner JR. Choose the free sky and see if that's correct. And if that doesn't work, choose the spectrum and see if that's correct. And then if none of those are correct for you, you can actually type the letters a, E, T, R, one, two, three, four. You can literally type the letters in any order. Take a look right here, A, E, R, T. Why is it not R, P, Y, T? Roll pitch yaw throttle. It's aileron elevator roll and throttle that's the control surfaces of an airplane, which quadcopters don't even have control surfaces, so it's kind of dumb, but A, roll, E, pitch, R, yaw, T, throttle. Basically, rearrange these four letters into the order that makes your controls map correctly. And then hit save. Once the channel mapping is correct, the next thing we're gonna do is check the channel direction. And channel direction means that when I push the throttle up, the channel goes towards 2000. And when I push it down, it goes down towards 1000, okay? When I push the yaw left, the channel goes down. When I push the yaw right, the channel goes up. Pitch forward is up, pitch back is down, and roll left and roll right. If any of your channels are reversed, which I, I don't see why they would be, but if any of your channels are reversed, here's how to deal with that. What I want you to do is press the model key on your radio and then page to the inputs screen. And here on the input screen, I want you to see that all of these numbers are 100. If somehow one of these numbers has been changed to a negative number, like minus 100, it will invert the channel. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight the one that you need to change. You're gonna press the jog wheel and click to edit. And you're gonna go down to this parameter called weight. And you're gonna modify that parameter and just move the scroll wheel to change it to 100. Now, it's very unlikely that that's happened. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna page to the mixes screen. All of the numbers there should be 100. If any of those numbers are negative, that's why your channel is reversed. We're gonna long press and edit. We're gonna go down to wait, and we're gonna click and roll the jog wheel to make that number be 100. It's very unlikely that that happened, but I guess it's very unlikely that your channel will be reversed at all. But just in case, the last thing I wanna show you is if you press the page key to go to the outputs screen. On any of these outputs, if I click the jog wheel one time and edit and go down to direction, I can invert the direction of the channel and that will also cause the channel to be inverted. If any of those three things have been done, then your channel will be reversed, but probably that hasn't happened. I just wanted to see why. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the endpoints of our channels. I want you to notice that when I put the throttle all the way down, the channel goes to 989, and when I put the throttle all the way up, it goes to 2012. The flight controller expects those numbers to be 1000 and 2000, and uh, there's almost no downside to just leaving them as they are. In fact, I'm kind of confused as to why they don't default to 1000 to 2000, but they don't. There's a thing we can do to fix this, and I do it. You only have to do it one time in the model, and then every model you bind, every, every uh, aircraft you bind to that model going forward will have the fix made. Let me show you how to fix it. We're gonna press the model key, and we're gonna page to the outputs screen. And in the outputs screen, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the throttle up and down, and I want you to see that this 1500 US here, that's showing the current channel value of whichever channel is selected. So right now channel one is selected, and as I move the throttle, nothing is happening. It's not moving. So I'm gonna go down to channel two, and moving the throttle, nothing's happening. I'm gonna go down to channel three, aha. Now do you see that when I move the throttle, it goes from 2012 to 988. So now channel three is our throttle channel, and we do this with the throttle because the throttle's not spring-loaded, so it's easy to put down and up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the jog wheel one time and click edit, and then I'm gonna go down to min. I'm gonna put the throttle all the way down, I'm gonna highlight min, and I'm gonna click to edit that value. And I'm gonna look up here at 988 US, 988 microseconds, and I'm gonna look in Betaflight at the throttle channel, which should match that value pretty closely. 
and I'm gonna roll the jog wheel until I get to 1,000. Okay, there's 1,000. Now in beta flight, when the throttle is all the way down, we're at 1,000, isn't that nice? And then we're gonna put the throttle all the way up, 2012. I'm gonna click to select that value and scroll down to max. And I'm gonna adjust max the exact same way to make the maximum value be 2,000. Now in rare cases, you won't be able to hit exactly 1,000 and 2,000. It may go from 999 to 1,001. Don't stress about that. It doesn't really matter, you're close enough, okay? So now we have set the min and the max to 97.8 and minus 97.8. That makes our endpoints be exactly 1,000 and 2,000. And that's what we want. Next, we're gonna hit the return key to back out and once again to back out. And finally, with channel three, which we just adjusted, selected, we're gonna long press the jog wheel and copy min max to all. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna copy those endpoints to all of the other channels so that now the yaw channel, 1000 and 2000, pitch channel, 2000 and 1000, 1000 and 2000. Now our endpoints are correct. There's one more thing I want you to do here in the receiver tab, and that is I want you to adjust the stick low and the stick high threshold. And I'm not sure how much detail I'm gonna go into on this because I don't wanna get bogged down, but when you have your endpoints set correctly, 1000 to 2000, it's a good idea to adjust your stick low and your stick high threshold to be closer to those values. So we're gonna set our stick low threshold from 1050 down to 1010. You might be tempted to like, since my channel goes down to 1000, let's set it to 1000, but don't do that or you may have trouble arming the quad. You need a little bit of spacing between the stick low threshold and the actual lowest channel value. So I'm gonna set the stick low threshold to 1010 and the stick high threshold to 1990. Uh, which are both 10 off from the min and max. Uh, if you are someday dealing with a quadcopter that hasn't had the endpoints set correctly, always set the endpoints correctly before you adjust the stick low and the stick high threshold, otherwise the quadcopter may refuse to arm. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save to save that. And now your control sticks are perfectly calibrated, set up and ready to fly your quadcopter. Next thing we need to do is set up our aux modes so that we can like arm the quadcopter. And that's gonna be the topic for the next video. Uh, link to the playlist down in the, you know the drill by now. There's a link to the entire playlist of all of these videos down in the video description and a card will appear on screen if the platform you're watching on supports cards. I will see you there.